okay yes so thanks thanks much everybody for our, our thanks everybody for our webinar in this program that we've been running um i'm joined today by philip schwark there he is and his colleague christoph starman and um philip will uh, take the take the reins and and lead the the presentation right now so philip over to you thank you very much perfect thank you so we have today a quick presentation a presentation regarding our testia smart augmented inspection tool and um, what we will have first is a slight introduction by using powerpoint afterwards we have prepared some uh, videos for you so that you can see how it works uh, as a hands-on within the production to give you a better overview about the functionalities and how it is working first of all why we have invented this tool and what our first challenge was uh, where we had a need for this. So basically our, our old workflow process within the production was uh, always that the engineering department was uh, uh, should do for the inspection installation. Usually they were writing procedures, they were printing uh, technical 2D drawings uh, on paper. They were handing those information over to the shop floor department and uh, our blue color workings were using the information which were paper-based uh, for installations for example and uh, as well for quality inspections to make sure that everything is correctly installed um, in the case that they had an incident there a non-conformity for example within the uh, inspection or during the inspection they uh, were uh, marking it on the paper and afterwards uh, they were handing it over again to the responsible shop floor person for them and this person was digitalizing uh, the paperwork the drawings what they have marked and they were creating non-conformities this was handed back to the engineering department in the end. And uh, so the workflow started again to fix the problem. So what we said, okay, this is time consuming for the digitalization and uh, the paper is not giving a good overview for the technicians. Due to that, we said, okay, we want to be paperless within the inspection or installation within the production. Uh, and everything shall be nicely colorized so that the blue color workers or the worker shall exactly know what to do and that it's very easy for this person to orientate within the shop floor or in front of uh, the assembly what she, they shall to do. Um, as well, if they have a problem, they shall be able to do everything within one tool and not to fill out uh, a paper-based questionnaire uh, so that we need to digitalize it afterwards again uh, and um, to create next steps uh, task because this was very time consuming and if we would have a digital concept there everything could be transferred and live to the responsible people and they could already uh, plan the next task following to solve problems that might exist at the step so the system that was uh, or is developed uh, is called or uh, Mira within Airbus. Um, it is in place since 2012, and uh, there are over 900 users using the system within Airbus uh, by using different end user devices. So we are using tablets uh, quite often within the production, so ruggedized ones. Um, as well, we have standard computers, maybe if we just want to view the CAD data there, and we can as well use the HoloLens. So this is really very important for us that we cover all the different uh, systems as some people do not feel comfortable with the HoloLens, for instance, or uh, they just want to have something more ruggedized as a tablet for uh, example so that it's really industrial ready within the production and stable there it's already very largely used and uh, there are a lot of benefits within the airbus shop floor so if we come to the different application areas the first really typical one that we have is the installation use case here 
So what you can see already on the first image is that we have uh, an aircraft from the inside. We have the stringer and frames there. Those are the bars. And uh, we have as well some orange uh, parts highlighted. Those are the ones that the blue color worker shawl install. And we have as well, uh, I hope you can see my mouse here, some green highlighted ones, for instance. Those are the ones that are already installed and that are marked as complete by the worker. So uh, we always have a complete overview about what shall be done in the next step and what has been done and if there are still open tasks or not. Um, on the second, as the second application, we have the inspection, like quality checks, if everything is correctly installed. We um, have a similar view as on the installation here uh, with some guides that you can go through. So you have different tasks to check if everything is correctly installed. For instance, there might be a wrong orientation used for a single uh, part or uh, just, just something broken afterwards or damaged. So um, that we can create a non-conformity report out of this. So this is a sec uh, third use case here, and we can uh, connect or push in live as well those information directly in the non-conformity management system if you have one, or you can get the uh, data directly and uh, review it within the mirror system here from us. So on top of the information that you have already within the uh, CAD data. So uh, you can imagine you can just select one of those uh, highlighted parts. Then you can see the part number, the exact position within the CAD or in the real world as well. Um, so that it's very easy to track down which part is uh, meant and uh, which part is uh, damage or whatever um, is done within in the non-conformity management. What you can do as well within this report that you're going to create is to take a photo of the non-conformity event uh, for documentation and you can write as well, for instance, some uh, sentences to explain what the problem is before it gets handed over to the uh, specific department to solve this problem. Another uh, application area are the smart so-called smart instructions where you can really define a step-by-step -step guide what shall be done for within an inspection sometimes we for instance have a specific order that we need to stick to uh, to find all um, problems that are existing or if you want to have an uh, training guide, for instance, you could use this as well uh, to describe the single step, what needs to be done first and what needs to be done afterwards. And um, the user of the system is always guided to the correct position within the system uh, so that it's really very safe and everyone can, will do the installation on the first time right. Uh, so it's a huge quality improvement and everything will be correctly installed here. But the installation with the smart instruction is the one point. The second point is the uh, quality checks uh, where we might have just a checklist where we can say, okay, it's correctly installed, everything is fine. But maybe we have as well that there are some measurements taken during those inspections. So um, as well here, we can insert data, measurement data directly into the system, into the inspection and uh, everything will be stored as well on maybe if it uh, synchronized to your personal non-conformity management or it can be extracted directly out of uh, the mirror system or viewed within the mirror system how do we get to the point that uh, we can use it within the production three different steps need to be taken for this the first one is the preparation phase so within the preparation phase we define uh, with the engineering department what shall be done at what time and um, so what we have seen first on the first slide and the top uh, points there the second point is the execution of the work program which is provided by the engineering department so this can be the installation or maybe the quality check um, or maybe as well a training so this is really when you run the program that was previously defined and as a third step we take 
all the outcome from the execution. So from the quality events and so on, and we can check if everything is correctly done, if all tasks have been finalized, and we can analyze the non-conformities events there. So if we come to a closer look for the preparation, for the work preparation. So the key information that is needed here is the CAD data uh, provided uh, for the assembly of your product. So we take this uh, 3D data and say, okay, which information is uh, are the ones that we want to inspect and which information do we want to display, for example, as background information for a better orientation, uh, for better feeling of the uh, end user, let's say. Uh, for instance, if you would be in an aircraft and you can see what you can see here, we would just highlight the stringer and frames here uh, so that the worker always knows where he is and so that he has a real world mapping of the CAD map uh, data at this point. Um, what you can do as well is that you can enrich your CAD information by additional third party uh, tools like uh, or sources, like if you have an XML file, uh, Excel sheet, or want to extract directly data from your ERP system, you can enrich the CAD data, for instance, um, with additional naming information there. So this information. Second point that we need to define here to bring it to life is the inspection parts definition. So where we take from the whole CAD information package, the specific parts that we can select afterwards and uh, which describes what the user shall do in the end within the shop floor. If we combine those both information, background information and parts that we want to inspect or work with, uh, we can run them with our preparation module and we can create a work program which uh, contains those both information. So the work program is basically an extremely simplified, compressed uh, CAD view with uh, limited data in there as usually CAD data is very complex and you need very powerful computers. So we have a simplified work program that you can open on all devices that we support. So uh, that's one of our keys as well. The end user can just use whatever computer they want or HoloLens as well. And uh, probably all computers that you are currently using would be sufficient to run the end user's uh, software. So if we come to the end user, the execution uh, view, we have on the we we have received the work program that was previously defined by the engineering department. So the first step is that the worker opens the software and is just opening the working program by double clicking on it. Afterwards, the software is loaded, as you can see here on the first uh, photo. Uh, in the second step, and you can see some green parts that are highlighted already uh, that shall be installed or inspected, for example. So, uh, as you can see, we have a different as is than to be uh, situation. The green ones are still missing, so uh, this is already something that needs to be installed. So, this checkup can be either done. Uh, or installation can be either done by using the tablet or HoloLens. The big advantage for the HoloLens in this case is here that it's hands-free and the worker can use tools with both hands and can freely move um, and can just do directly what is uh, displayed without any interaction there, uh, which needs a third device with the hands-on. For instance, to bring an example, if it go, comes to installation and we have just, let's say, uh, a lot of screws that needs to be placed, uh, the guy can always just highlight the same screws where he had, needs the same screwdriver and just uh, 
install one after the other ones and then take the second screw set which another screwdriver uh, to fix those ones so uh, he does not need to change tools and he always see which screw is exactly the one that i shall uh, install by using the same one uh, this is of course an extremely simplified example uh, but i hope that this gives you an idea of what could be uh, increased an in efficiency and um, as you do not need to change the tools that are used within the production um, and of course um, you can bring this to all other use cases that you have in mind so to give your life or the idea of what shall be done here i we have a video and you should see it right now. Um, so what you see in this video is uh, a split screen first. On the one side, you have on the top right directly uh, the view on the tablet version and you have the real world view on uh, what our uh, colleague is doing here, what Christoph is doing, and you can already see his hand up here. So if I'm, I want to go first a little bit more into detail here on the top right. So we already have the CAD data transformed into a work program. And for the step, first step, we need to calibrate uh, the CAD data with the real world view. So um, as you see, this is not correctly mapped here on the top right, uh, and it's, there's a difference to the real world data. So to do this, we need to scan first a barcode uh, to explain where the CAD data is uh, map, uh, incur, uh, mapped directly with the real world data. And then afterwards, everything is correctly mapped and you can see it is stable and the worker can freely move around in front of the structure that uh, he wants to inspect or to install parts on. And uh, just imagine you have a very large uh, structure there with exactly the same informations in there like uh, it looks always the same like in a long tube like in an aircraft for example uh, this helps a lot to find the correct position for you so you can see here or you what you had seen was a wireframe view uh, so but you can as well change to the pure CAD data view. Um, for example, if you are distracted by the um, information that is display coming from the real world and you just want to focus on the CAD data first at this point. This, of course, is as well stable as well, and you can walk around uh, on the parts that you want to work with. So this is the basic tracking what is uh, how it is done with the tablet version if we go in a second step of course to the inspection use case here um, what i had as well explained and um, here you can already see that some parts are orangely highlighted here those two and that the worker can select the parts you want to work with so what you can see as well is you have a full list with parts that you want to inspect or install and you have a different menu here the first one is for example if you have an uh, inspection you can just say okay everything is correctly managed and uh, uh, if we would press that, the orange, previously orangely highlighted one would turn green. So this is done. But uh, what you can see now in the next steps is the one, the use case that we have a problem, a non-conformity here. So first, our colleague is focusing on the tool to see some additional information. He would see some details, and then he could as well take a photo here. What you can see here uh, of the problem for example here the ins inspected part is missing so of course a photo for this use case does not make a lot of sense but if it would be damaged for example or 
uh, something is some smaller parts is missing you can uh, have a documentation by using the photo so that for the next colleague who shall fix the problem it's uh, clear uh, what needs to be done there and he could as well write a comment to that uh, what is missing and everything is in one place so if we, we move on here we have the photos and we have as well a list of non-conformities in here that were already detected so you can see all problems that were reported before on the use case and um, those would be inspected afterwards if there would be an uh, information missing or a problem this could be inspected as well by the engineering department and everything would be digitalized and could be extracted as well from this platform So if we come to the summary, what uh, we can achieve by using our uh, mixed reality system here is, of course, that um, we are paperless. That's one of the key points already from the beginning, uh, that we are much more efficient to update data, that we do not need to exchange paper uh, in real for example right now it's a perfect use case probably the engineering department is based at home and we want to uh, prepare work orders for our colleagues within the plant we can do everything from home we do not need to ask colleagues uh, within the plant to print their workshops we can just do everything remotely here um, we can um, we as well have the high advantage that everything uh, is correctly installed here um, so that we have a higher quality so due to that as well we have a much lower cost on non-quality events because everything uh, can be done or will be done correctly in the first place due to that we of course have a lot of time and cost saving due to, uh, as we are in general faster more efficient and we have a higher quality here we support different devices by using the system uh, like the hololens tablets your standard laptops whatever you want we have tracking systems for those devices in place so which make it extremely easy to navigate uh, within the work package or to have a digital training for example as well so to have to bring one example uh, within the Airbus group uh, for the A380, for example, there was a quality inspection where they show or where they had an inspection of all brackets. Uh, you can imagine there are thousands of them within an aircraft, um, and they had in the old in the past um, before 2012 they had a paper where they had described where they want to show go to to see if it's inst correctly installed or not for quality reasons. By using uh, the mixed reality system here, they were able to reduce this inspection time from three weeks to three days. This is, of course, a very extreme use case, but this already gives you an excellent overview about how much the efficiency can increase by using the system here. Okay, so this is everything of course already used by customers but if you say okay we have already our own infrastructure for instance for the non-conformity management or for our CAD data in place we can always customize the system and it's fl flexible so that it fits to your needs within the production and um, by now we have always really very good feedback by all uh, end users as well within the uh, productions as way well as they always saw a big benefit by using it uh, and it was highly accepted and uh, they prefer using this system with digital tools with colorized um, DMU data or CAD data over uh, paper uh, drawings or printings and uh, this is one of the very high benefits with a lot of um, acceptance within the production. So 
if you have questions regarding the system, you can now use the quality and uh, questions and answer function by Webex in the lower right of the screen and to raise questions. And as well, if you have questions um, afterwards as well, you can always contact Christoph or me uh, so that we can could see how we could bring a benefit fit to your use case within your production, within your quality checks, or as well within your trainings department, for instance. But you can imagine uh, there are many more use cases where you can get a benefit by this solution. Okay. So I would hand over to Matthew right now, see if we have some questions. Hi there, thanks, thanks, Philip. That was, uh, You're welcome. Uh, that was very interesting. Very good. I like the, I like the videos. Um, they're nice. They're very good. Uh, yes, we have some questions. Um, so, uh, the first question actually I've got here is, um, how long does it take to set up? What's the typical, I guess, so what's the typical process for setting up um mira if a company has no similar s system in place okay so um depends a little bit on the use case on the existing uh, resources as well if we take uh, or the existing cad data from the company we can directly load it into the company and we could set up uh, a first use case, a demonstrator very quickly and very quickly means a couple of days. So, uh, so that we could do perform a first inspection and uh, we could pr uh, provide a first demonstrator here. If, uh, of course, it shall be everything done by the engineering department afterwards, uh, we need to train or to show, give a short introduction in to the system, but this is, can be done very quickly as well. Depends on the complexity of the use case. But we just had an example with the scanner you had seen here with the inspection where we just inspected some single parts and I explained uh, the system to the engineer there. And uh, this was done in less than a day. Okay. Um, we have one here. Uh, very good, thank you. Uh, what kind of uh, infrastructure, both software and hardware, require is required to use the tools? Okay, so um, the basic infrastructure is you need one computer, mm -hmm. and a folder where you store data in. So that's a very the simplest, uh, simplest setup. So in the end, we have one computer from the engineer, which should be a little bit more powerful, where we run the preparation module on to transform this existing CAD data into a work program. So this should be one with, yeah, uh, a desktop PC with a little bit more power in there, but uh, nothing extremely special. Um, and this should already exist in every department. Then we need to have a, a file server or a folder to exchange this work program. Every standard folder is good enough for doing this. So you do not need any uh, servers for that, any specific one. So you, the existing infrastructure of a standard company should be sufficient to fit to this uh, software and the system. On um, end user point of view, so for the execution part, we can either install it on a tablet. So the, we have two, possibilities here on the tablet. The first oh, the first thing is it needs to have Windows 10. That's it. And I think we need to have eight gigabits of uh, memory and a an standard processor. So nothing, no special requirements. If we want to use the tracking here, the built-in camera is not good enough. We have a USB camera, a standard uh, camera that you can connect to your computer. And uh, then you can have the tracking functionality as well enabled for your computer. If you want to use it on the HoloLens, you need a HoloLens and uh, we can need to install our uh, application on it and we need to transfer the work package to the hololens and then you can use it as well 
Okay, lovely. Um, um, hopefully this next one is easy to answer. Um, can you, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is from when you mentioned about people working from home. Um, can experts view remotely the hollow lens view live? Currently, this is, depends a bit on the remote uh, software you're using. Um, by the HoloLens, we have some limitations that it is not that easy to share it with the built-in functionalities here. We are currently working on uh, an adaption of our remote assistance software to um, the HoloLens, to the new version, and where we try to grab the mixed reality view and to transport it to the remote expert. So this is a bit tricky, but we are working on it and uh, there are some workarounds right now, um, but nothing delivered by Microsoft that enables this mix to share this mixed reality view in a secure proofed way that fits to larger industry uh, needs right now. That's our experience. Um, but if you're using the tablet, you can, of course, always share your screen content here. And uh, this is the answer if you want to have the mixed reality view right now, uh, where you can start right away with the HoloLens. It's a little bit more tricky, uh, but we will find uh, we are working on a solution here. And there are some smaller workarounds that already enables uh, us to deliver this functionality as well. Yeah. Okay. So. If it's so, if it's on a tablet, you can use um, a, a, a remote assistant style software, um, similar to what we, what uh, our other product actually, the Test Deer make. But if it's a live feed from the Hololens, it's it's something that's in development. That's yes, safe. Uh, yeah. Okay. There are, it's hard to grab the mixed view from the Hololens, and uh, there's no pure view to switch to grab from one application the other screen or mixed reality applications content there. And that's the limitation coming and we're working on it at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, I, um, three, three questions in a row here, uh, which which um, I can see Christoph has already answered one on the Q&A text box here, but um, it says, is it possible to have an automated inspection? That's question um, one. We do not have an automated way. So this is still something that needs to be done manually here. Mm -hmm. Um, as we do not have a um, recognition of the parts that are sufficient enough and 100% proofed um, so that we can say that it's good enough for quality insurance. Uh, there were studies running on that within the Airbus Group Innovation uh, Company before. And uh, they realized that if we have large white structures, for example, like an aircraft from the outside, uh, then we run into problems and uh, it's not the quality high enough to work with this. And uh, due to that, as we said, okay, quality is really key here. We need to be 100% safe uh, that our aircraft here are good and everything is correctly installed. Due to that, we decided to go the manual way as we have a much higher accuracy here. Okay, so it needs the human intervention yes. for, for each milestone. Um, okay, uh, second question is, how long does it take to prepare the data? Um, depends a lot on the size of the data set. If I take again the uh, data set that you had seen in the um, video, like a scanner, it was size of two meter uh, point, 1.5 meters or something like this. Uh, this took one minute 50. Okay. So the pure processing part, the definition okay. of uh, saying which parts we want to inspect took for the first time, well, we needed to inspect the CAD data, the existing one, to decide which parts we want to take. Uh, if you know you're not working the first time on it, we add another, another 15 minutes. But this really depends a lot on the existing data, on how structured they are and uh, how easy it is to select single parts for the inspection. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very good, thank you. Well, um, for that, one... One Sorry, additional carry. information, uh, we are currently working on a server-based uh, software for the preparation. 
so uh, that you do not uh, that, that you can share the hardware resource with your entire department or with your company so that we have in the end a website where you can go to uh, and to select the data and to define your inspection on the server and once you have defined it for instance uh, we have it within airbus for the single aircraft and probably for the next aircraft, it's exactly the same task that shall be done, maybe with a little bit different setup. We can just load the old work program, say, okay, we want to reuse it, uh, it reloads the uh, information, and uh, in this case, we are even faster. It's just by clicking on it on a second time. Brilliant. Um... Okay, um, I can see Christoph has, has written the answer to this one, but just, just for people who might be viewing this at a later date. Um, um, with which CAD data can be worked? Team Center um, or um, etc.? Um, Christoph says it's uh, the program supports 3D XML data. Yes, so um, in the end, we are supporting a lot of different data sets. Uh, I can give you the answer if you have dedicated uh, questions or file formats that you want to, to have a review on, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. We, the standard one, the open source file format, let's say, it's a 3D XML. So every CAD software supports a transformation to this format. So in the standard solution, uh, this is the possible one that is integrated. But for instance, within Airbus, we are working with Katia and uh, we have another plugin for that. And we have a lot of different plugins for a lot of different file formats. Uh, for example, Siemens NX uh, is possible out of the box as well. But uh, this is, there's a quite huge list of different softwares and uh, we would need to double check that uh, afterwards. So if you have a question for a specific format, please just send a mail to us uh, to the one of the given email addresses and uh, we will find uh, the answer for you if it would be possible to use it straight away with your existing file formats. Lovely. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right. We have uh, two, just two more. Yeah, uh, just two more, um, Philip. Uh, <laughs> So you made reference to um, the servers. Um, is Mira run on an external server or would it be internal to the company? So it, can, it, it will be internal, um, but servers, we do not need a lot of servers here. So what we're talking about is standard uh, direction, so like folders on your computer, it's good enough. So we do not even need a uh, server. But uh, usually we all have, uh, for our exchange with other colleagues, we have just folders that are shared uh, internally that you can access by using your Explorer, File Explorer. If you have mm -hmm. a folder within your File Explorer that is shared with your colleagues, that's your server. So uh, there's no need uh, to have a SQL server, a licensed server. We can support those, we can connect to those things, but a file server is good enough. Very good, okay. And last question is, uh, what's the operating system that Mira runs on, Windows, iOS, or Android? Uh, we are running on Windows. Windows, okay. Um, and for the HoloLens, of course, it's a HoloLens uh, Windows system. It's a window system. Okay, lovely. Well, this is it's one of the most um, it's mo one of the most widely used um, operating systems within within a commercial entity, anyway, isn't it? So, um, perfect. Okay, that that was all of our questions. Thank you very much, um, Philip and Christoph. Um, very good to have you have you join us on this one. Um, very impressive, nice content. So, um, that's the end of our webinar. Thanks ever so much, everybody, for joining. And um, we will email the, the uh, we'll email the presentation um, out um, at the end of the uh, in the next couple of days or so. Okay. Thank you very much, and take care. Thanks for joining. Goodbye.